Hello everyone, I am Shayma Zwitni, a second year PhD student in the Faculty of Sciences of the University Sidi Mohammed bin Abdullah in Fez. My subject of thesis takes place on the image captioning based on deep learning under the supervision of Mr. Abdullah Sabri. Today we have the pleasure to present our paper entitled A Comparison Between LSTM and Transformers for Image Captioning which is covered by me, Mr. Abdelwahd Sabri and Mr. Abdullah Arab. But before starting, I would like to thank the organization committee of the conference for this opportunity to present and discuss our work. The outlines of our presentation are the following. We will start with a small introduction that gives a general idea about our subject. Then we will detail the methodology used for our study. Then we will present the obtained results in the experimental section to discuss them afterwards in the discussion section, then a conclusion in the end. Before starting, we have to define image captioning. So what is image captioning? It is the task of describing the contents of an image in words. It integrates both computer vision and natural language processing. Have the computer vision that is a field of artificial intelligence that allows computers and systems to derive meaningful information from digital images, videos, and other visual inputs, and to take action or make recommendations based on these informations. In the other side, we have the natural language processing. That is a branch of artificial intelligence that focuses on giving machines the ability to understand, generate, or translate human language as it's, as it's written or spoken. Chatbots are among the most popular NLP software. So, we can say that natural language processing is a fairly generic term that covers a very wide, very wide field of applications like automatic translation, sentiment analysis, speech recognition, etc. When we talk about image captioning, it has many complexities and it is the subject of many important research works. Among its applications are medical image captioning, quality control in industry, traffic data analysis, and especially assistive technologies for visually impaired people. Our methodology is based on three main parts. First, we will talk about the data set that we use in our work. Then, we will explain the chosen neural network that we use for feature extraction. And the last part contains two neural networks used for text processing, including LSTM and transformers. Datasets differ in several ways, including the number of images, caption format, number of captions per image, and image size. The most commonly used datasets for image captioning are Flickr 8K, Flickr 30K, and MS Coco. The dataset used for this study is Flickr 8K because of its small size. So, the model can be trained easily on any laptop, and the most important thing is that it is available for free. Flickr is a large dataset that consists of 8,000 images. It is divided into two folders. The first one contains images, and the second one contains identifiers of images. Each image is linked to five different captions, and each of these captions describes the elements and the events represented in the image. The dataset contains a linguistic variety that can be used to describe each image. We talked in the previous section about the dataset that we choose to train our models. Now we will talk about the VGG16 used for the feature extraction of the images. In other words, it is the model which allows to transform an image into a single vector. So, the VGG16 is a convolutional network that is, consists of three fully connected layers and 13 convolutional layers and pre-trained on the ImageNet dataset, which is a dataset of over 14 million images belonging to 1,000 classes. It is proposed by Simonian and Zisserman from the University of Oxford 
in the paper very deep convolutional network for large scale image recognition. The model achieves 92.7% of five test accuracy in image nets. We talked in the previous section about the Flickr dataset and VGG16. Now we will present the LSTM and transformers that are used for text processing tasks. So what is LSTM? It is a sequence processor that is based on word embedding layer that handles text inputs and a recurrent neural network layer with long and short-term memory. It has feedback connections and it is capable of processing the entire sequence of data. Apart from single data points such as images, this finds application in speech recognition, machine translation, etc. LSTM is a special kind of RNN which shows outstanding performance on a large variety of problems. Most of the current models of image captioning use the encoder decoder architecture. We have the encoder that allows matching the inputs in its vector representation. Then, the decoder generates another output based on the vector generated by the encoder. The main adv advantage of this architecture is that the parameters of the whole network can be learned at the same time. Here we have an example in the image below of using LSTM for image captioning. We use the VGG16 model pre-trained on the image net dataset without the output layer to extract the image features for subsequent use as a vector that will be processed by a dense layer. The layer receives input sequences that are fed into an integration layer that use a filter to in your pad values. At the end, we find the LSTM layer. The sequence processor and the feature extractor both generate a fixed, uh, fixed length vector after which the decoder merges this vector using an addition operation and then passes it to a dense layer. Then, with the final dense output layer that makes a prediction of the next word in the sequence based on a softmax prediction on the entire output vocabulary. Now let's talk about transformers. So what is a transformer? It is a model that is based on the encoder-decoder architecture, similar to that of RNN, and that uses the attention mechanism that avoids recurrence by establishing the dependencies between inputs and outputs. The difference between transformer networks and RNN is that transformers can receive the input sentence in parallel. All words of the sentence can be transmitted at the same time because there is no time step associated with the input. As you see in the figure that presents the architecture of the transformers, we have the encoder that consists of two sub-layers. The first layer is based on a multi-head set attention mechanism that allows models to associate each word of the input with the other words. The second layer is based on a sample feed-forward network connected according to the position. For each word, we can have an attention vector that detects the dependencies between the words of the sentence. The difference between the encoder and the decoder that in that, in addition to the sub-layers of the encoder, we have the decoder that contains a third layer to perform multi-head attention on the output of the encoder stack. Using residual connections followed by a normalization of the layers between the sub-layers. Based on Flickr 8K datasets for training our model and the neural network VGG16 for image feature extraction, and transformers and LSTM for text processing, we could build two models for image casting task. The first one is based on VGG16 and LSTM, and the second one, second one is based on VGG16 and transformers. Both models are trained for 38 books due to the limited computational resources. 
We are not allowed to try too many different hyperparameters and we obtained as a result the value that we will present in the next section. The evaluation metric used for our comparison study is the blue metric to evaluate the performance of the model in order to avoid too short sentences and indicate the quality of the predicted caption compared to the five reference captions provided. The letter varies between 0 and 1, so when the score approached to 1, the description will be of a good quality. The table below shows the values obtained in the evaluation based on the blue metric. We find that the values obtained by the transformers vary between 0 0.31 and 0 0.36 which indicates that the predicted sentence is understandable and well translated. Concerning the values obtained by LSTM vary between 0 0.17 and 0 0.26, which indicate that the case is clear but has grammatical errors. From these values, we can conclude that the transformers give better results than LSTM. Although human evaluation is not efficient, for humans the judgment is very subjective because different people have different responses. Furthermore, the overall quality depends on many underlying factors. It is difficult to have a uniform rule to regulate this type of evaluation based on grammatically readable, uh, readability and logic. In this section, we will present the descriptions generated by our models. The figure below presents the description generated by the first model based on LSTM and the second model based on transformers. The first description on the left is generated by LSTM, the model based on LSTM and describes the image as two children that are, that are, that are playing without mentioning the dog. The second description generated by the by the model based on transformers on the right, puts the attention on the dog that is running to catch the frisbee because of the attention mechanism used by the transformers. So, it turns out that, uh, that the transformers describe the images based on the priority of the elements. Based on the obtained results in the previous, previous section, we can say that transformers give more specific results than LSTM because they, they avoid recursion, treat sentences as a whole and learn the relationships between words due to the multi-head attention mechanism and positional embedding. But they can only capture dependencies within the fixed, uh, fixed input size used to train them. Which means if we use a sentence of size greater than 50, the model face fails to capture the relationships between the first word of a sentence and the words that appear after the 50 position word. We conclude that transformers networks give the best accuracy and are also less complex and computationally expensive. But despite of the advantages of transformers, LSTMs are more useful for time series, and their advantages are considerable. On the other hand, we can say that transformers have a difficulty for time series forecasting tasks. So, in March 2022, a research team from Google and the Swiss Artificial Intelligence Laboratory proposed a new architect architecture called Block Recurrent Transformer which will implement it in the next study to know these advantages and disadvantages. And thank you. Uh, I am at your disposal if you have any questions.